Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Walking in faith gives us a good testimony before God. If you and I want to receive a good testimony before God, it is going to happen because you and I walk by faith. Who lived by faith in the promises of God for the future. And because they lived in such a manner, the Bible says, God was not ashamed to call them to be known as their gods. They also lived by faith in the promises of God for the future. That had a bearing on how they lived in the present. And because of that, God was not ashamed to be called their God. They went about their everyday life. They believed God for the present, for the here and the now. But they also had faith in God for something in the future. The people of Israel inheriting the promised land or the land of promise. So we can look at their journey and draw lessons for us. If you want to go into the land that God says he'll give you, you need to have faith and obedience. Walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham. It says, as it is written... I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope in hope believed. So that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. So this is Abraham's report card that highlights his steps of faith. But I want to point out something here. Abraham did not have a perfect life. Abraham believed God. He saw God as the one who gives life to the Against all hope, in hope, he still believed. Who contrary to hope, in hope he believed. That means when there was no logical reason to have hope, he still had hope. And that hope ignited his faith. He was not weak in faith and did not look at the natural. So it says there in Romans 4 verse 19, not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body or the body of Sarah's womb. To keep your faith strong. Focus on God and his promises. Not on the circumstances. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't let unbelief come in because he knew if unbelief came and he would stumble at the promise of God. He said, no, I'm not giving place to unbelief. He was strengthened in faith. Giving glory to God. That means he gave praise. He gave thanks. He gave honor. He gave worship to God. And as he did that, his faith was strengthened. He was fully convinced that what God had promised, he will also perform. So he reached this place of full conviction. So faith rests in God's ability to fulfill his word. When you reach that place, having done all to stand, you just stand fully convinced. That's it. The joy of faith is not just a fulfilled promise, but a greater intimacy with the one who gave the promise. It's not just that your body gets healed, or that your debts get cleared, or the mountains get moved, or the giants get slain. But the joy of this journey of faith is that you and I come into a place of deeper intimacy with our God. That I know him now much more than I knew him before I began this journey of faith. And the joy of knowing him is far greater than the joy of the fulfilled promise. Faith without corresponding actions cannot produce. Working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect. By works faith became mature. It came to the place where it could conceive, it could bear fruits. 